There is a wonderful phrase by Sri Aurobindo and it is, all life is yoga. And really, there's a huge amount to unpack in that and open to it if one feels a resonance. I suppose you could say yoga is that way or sadhana to unite with the divine and the divine being that that is individual, universal and transcendent. So you and me, the world around us, the universe and that which is beyond. So it does not exclude anything. So what would this really mean to open to the possibility that all life is yoga? What would be the implications and possibilities and what would it reveal? So all life is yoga. So it would really open up a tremendous possibility an opportunity in each and every moment that each and every interaction, experience, meeting was a meeting with the divine. The divine meeting itself in different poises or different faces or experiences or ways and at different levels of consciousness. So each encounter really is a sacred encounter. <laughs> now on the surface it may not appear to be so because we often meet people that are maybe going through their own challenges, they're at their own level of consciousness, so they might be quite egoic, reactive, angry, confrontational, hostile. But even within them there is a soul, a spark of the divine and their outer nature, their personality, their mind and their vital and physical may be going through a certain process and it's not really for us to judge and we can also step out of reactivity or getting pulled into someone else's level of consciousness. That if we can see it as an opportunity to be present, awake, kind of a step back to our inner being or our soul and to respond appropriately to whatever the situation is so it would, every moment or every interaction would offer us an opportunity to evolve. And that's huge because, you know, we then take spirituality out of any confines of the meditation room or a spiritual weekend or spirituality can blossom into all of life. So we increase our potential for growth. Now in a way we're all on or in the slow yoga of nature, everybody. We're not conscious of it, so to speak. Many aren't conscious of that. So it's an unconscious yoga in that life or nature, all that is around us and that is us in our surface personality is providing us with experiences for growth. We may not recognize this because we can be identified with certain mental formations or vital formations, belief systems, desires, impulses, conditioned habits that keep us functioning at a certain level or way. 
but we can always step back, not sanction this identification anymore. Come back to our deeper self. And this is really to become conscious participants in the yoga. So then we're on a yogic path, so to speak, or a spiritual path. And then the challenge is, can we extract the rasa, their spiritual nourishment from any experience or encounter? That there's a possibility in our life to really nourish ourselves. And for that, we have to step out of old condition patterns and not to see ourselves as victim or to fall into self-pity or blame or hold grievances. That we view the world and each other and indeed ourself with a loving gaze, with presence. And that deepens into a delight, a delight of life itself. You could say it's a matter of where do you place yourself? Do you place yourself in the surface of your being, in old movements, ways of being? Or can you admit the possibility of the divine in front of you and as you? How then would you treat another if you saw them as divine? if you saw them as yourself. Now, this does not mean we passively surrender to all that life deals us, so to speak. You could say it's an active surrender to life in that we don't passively accept everyone or their bad behavior are certain instances, but we can act appropriately in a surrendered manner. That there's an inner guidance that's honing our movements, our speech, our very being and activity in the world is fused. So in a way, we don't have to seek the divine. The divine is looking out through every pair of eyes and indeed our own eyes. And we begin to deepen into that. So it's a wonderful possibility to open up to. All life is yoga. That you're on a tailor-made extended retreat provided by the power of the divine. And it is shaping you and giving you opportunity to evolve, to grow, to become conscious, to find the delight in life. And this power of the divine is often called Shakti. Chit Shakti, this conscious force. Or if we so choose, we call it the mother. The mother 
in her many guises is caring for us and sometimes the lessons or experiences we receive can be challenging, loving, tender, sometimes fierce. She has many faces, so to speak. Sometimes we get a challenging period in our life and maybe fail to understand or extract the rasa from it immediately. Sometimes it can take years for us be to become conscious enough to recognize what process was underway, how perhaps our ego was being deflated or being highlighted to make it obvious where we're still holding on to old patterns, old ways. And the more we become conscious, the more we can find a deep gratitude, a love for the mother, for the Shakti, the power of the divine. And we give ourselves deeper and deeper into it. Our trust and faith grows as we become more conscious. And you could say that faith is that which recognizes, not in a mental way, but a deeper knowing of, yes, this is for me. This is the way. This is what I give myself to. Really, Sometimes I see it as the whole of spirituality. What do you give yourself to? Do you give yourself to old movements, to collective mental formations of what's the right way to be in the world? Our traditional values, our own desires and impulses, our own egoic nature, what do we give ourselves to in each moment? And really when you ask yourself that, you're, you're allowing yourself to step back and really see it for what it is. And then there's also the possibility of, well, do I sanction this? Do I want to give myself to this? In that moment, you're reclaiming your, your lordship, so to speak, your power to disidentify, to give yourself to something more fitting more true for the stage you're at now. It's not that the ego is wrong. The ego serves a purpose for a while. It helps us centralize our identity in a, a whirlwind of mental and vital and physical formations. But then as can we come back from that and come to a deeper identity, a truer I. So all life is yoga. What does that open up for you? then there's no needing to escape life, to seek any heavenly realm, but to open to the depth of life and what is behind it, what is in it, and yourself as life. 
and of course the transcendent aspect, that which is beyond. So that's my current understanding and realization of Sri Aurobindo's term, all life is yoga. And of course, it will evolve as I evolve. 